What's up everyone, I'm Keller Montos, and in today's video I'm going to be showcasing some pretty unique battles in the Fantasy Cup running Legacy Steel Wing Togetic to completely shut down Flygon as well as having pretty good matchups up against most of the other fairies and then I've got Komo, O and Gebai in the back. Now today was a really weird day for me because it felt like I wasn't playing particularly well but my opponents just weren't capitalizing on my mistakes and as a result I was able to gain over 150 elo in just 4 sets with this team which is pretty crazy considering I didn't play particularly well but with that being said let's just get into the question of the day what's the most surprising pokemon you faced in the fantasy cup i know there are quite a lot of boring teams right now but there are a few spice lords running some very crazy picks so let me know in the comment section down below and with that being said let's get into the battles now Alright, so going into the first battle, and this is a slightly different team here. This was going to be a bonus battle, but I thought it just highlights how strong Togetic can be in the right situation, so I put it at the start. But here, we're going to go for a close combat up against the Skarmory. Unfortunately, Skarmory does completely core break this team, so not ideal. I'm going to swap into my Weezing. I don't expect them to full send a Brave Bird, and they don't, so which is really nice for me, because now I can at least go for an Overheat, but the opponent, if they want to, can just shield this up and go for a full Steel Wing Farm Down, which will not be ideal, because Skarmory's energy is going to be pretty good up against my team. I'm going to wait out the switch lock as long as possible. Come back in with my combo. Oh, I don't want to reveal my Togetic just yet. We're going to shield up the Sky Attack and hopefully make it to a Dragon Claw in time and we get there on the CMP tie with the next Sky Attack. The opponent is actually going to double shield their Skarmory. At this point, I'm just going to have to hope that Togetic can completely sweep this team here and the opponent's going to blind swap into their Flygon and against most of the meta, that's not that bad of a idea, but unfortunately up against Togetic, this is suicide as we double resist everything they could possibly throw of course they could run stone edge but in this meta it doesn't make sense to unless togetic was very dominant but here we're going to go for an airy lace airy lace doesn't quite take them out which then allows me to get even more farm with the steel wing the opponent is now going to go for a scorching sands does slightly more damage actually gets the attack debuff as well which is not ideal but we can go for an airy lace taking out the skarmory and the opponent's got lucario in the back so this should still be fine for us the opponent is going to fire off a charge group after six counters could have been a blaze kick unfortunately it is just a power up punch bait but that's fine we're gonna go for the aerial ace aerial ace dealing some decent damage there i think another aerial ace would have taken them out but i get greedy gonna go for a dazzling gleam and power punch doesn't quite take us out anyway so dazzling gleam will easily be enough damage to take out lucario and i'm able to take that game so GG's to that opponent there, and there you can see Togetic, when it does get aligned to Flygon, is absolutely devastating. But into the next battle, we see Registeel in the lead. Not ideal for us, and the opponent, there seems like a decent play there, obviously taking double resisted poison jab damage, and then swapping to wall the energy from the combo O, but they swap out way too late, that I can actually very comfortably flip this matchup if I want to, and of course I'm going to do that, because I don't want my Togetic aligned to their Registeel. So we're going to go for a close combat. Close combat is going to grab the shield from the opponent. We will make it to another close combat i throw on the cmp tie honestly not 100 sure if it does ko from this range but the opponent double shields their azu at this point i should just be able to fully poison jab farm them down now my switch clock is up they did swap out a little bit later but they don't swap back into the reggie still so i can fire off my charge group into whatever comes in let's see what it's going to be it is going to be a fly gone so we can go for that dragon claw dragon claw should be dealing some decent damage there the opponent swaps back into the reggie still they're gonna have to fire off a charge group to take us out and that is game over for the opponent as we can come in with our Gabite. Gabite is going to be able to tank a Focus Blast from full health and this dig is going to do a ton of damage to the Registeel. I don't think it quite puts them into mud shot farm down range, but it does not matter. We either go for a charge move here or force the opponent to throw their energy, and then Togetic once again can completely wall the Flygon in the back. There's nothing they can do. They might throw a charge move here just to see for science how much damage this does, but Scorching Sands does very, very embarrassingly low damage there, so the opponent just concedes the match. So GG's to that opponent there. Into the next game, we see Azumarill in the lead. And once again, this team isn't like amazing up against Azu, but it is definitely playable. What I always do if it's in the lead is I just tank the first move, go for a Dazzling Gleam, and then I swap into my Komo O. If the opponent lets this go through, we can just shield once on the Komo O and fully poison jab farm them down. So is that what we're going to do here? We're going to swap into the Komo O. The opponent is going to throw straight away as they go for the Ice Beam. And if they stay in here, they will not make it to an Ice Beam, which is a huge mistake from the 
opponent. Now we've got so much loaded energy. If they don't have another fairy type in the back, which it doesn't look like it, then this energy will be very useful as we go for a close combat. We're going to over farm here, going for the next close combat, and this should be grabbing the final shield or dealing huge damage to the S Cavalier. And we even make it to a Dragon Claw as well. Komo O putting in so much work, grabbing the final shield from the opponent. And here it's pretty likely that they're going to go for an Acid Spray. So we're going to swap into our Togetic here, just tank the move, and then swap instantly into my Gabi. And this should be the double counter backline. Yes, it is. It's Lucario in the back. This is just going to be a Blaze Kick, so I will just let it go through. Not going to do much damage. It is resisted damage. We can go for the Dig, and this will easily be enough damage from this range to take out Lucario. And I can just mud shot farm down S Cavalier, and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to that opponent there. Into the next game, we see Whimsicott in the lead. So pretty good lead matchup for us. The opponent's going to swap into Stunfisk. And I'm just slightly slow to swap out there. And the opponent's going to go for a charge move straight away. It could be the Earthquake. I call the bait. It is the Earthquake. We do live that. But honestly, if the opponent wants to, they might be able to double shield and fully mud shot farm me down. It's going to be really close here. But let's see if we can do it. We're going to go and shield up the next charge move. They, of course, can just go straight rock side now. We're going to go for the dig. And I think the opponent would be making a mistake if they try and throw a charge move here they should go for the mushroom farm down and they do and we just barely miss out on the next dig and the opponent has managed to flip switch advantage which is certainly not ideal but i swap i come in i catch the rock side onto my comma o which is a really nice play if i do say so myself and then the opponent comes in with their turtonator which seems like a strange play but obviously if they came in with the whimsical and we somehow got the farm down with our poison jab damage then obviously dragon claws are going to do a lot of damage up against the turtonator now the opponent goes for a dragon pulse they are in perfect Perfect farm down range with the poison jabs to take them out before they make it to the next charge move. But unfortunately, we're just a little bit too low there. We're going to go for a close combat. We're at the back to back, but the fairy wind damage will take me out. I'm going to fire off my airy lay straight away, making sure I don't tank any charge moves. And now it just depends. Can we live two rock sides from this health range? It will be very close, but let's see. First one coming through gets us into the yellow health range. I need to make it ideally to back to back charge moves here. The opponent fires off rock side number two. Doesn't quite take us out, but unfortunately, we, do, we just don't have enough energy there. So unfortunately, we do lose that game, but GG's to that opponent. Into next battle, we see a Fairy in the lead, and they are running Fairy win, so this is a positive matchup for us. Even though, of course, Meteor Mash is going to hit for super effective damage, we're just hitting our fast moves so much harder than they are, and we're going to put them into range where we nearly get them into Aerial Ace range. So I go for the first one, grabbing a shield from the opponent, going for the second Aerial Ace, and then I will swap into my Combo O here, hoping to catch a Meteor Mash, not able to do so, but I'm just going to shield this up. Combo O's energy is pretty handy into pretty much most things, especially a Galarian Stunfisk. And we are just going to go for the close combat on the CMP tie. Unfortunately, this will not quite be enough damage to take them out. And these poison jabs are triple resisted. So there was no way we're going to win this matchup. But Earthquake just definitely takes us out. Now that we've debuffed our defense, we can come in with the Gabi. Go for a full mudshot farm down. They're only making it to a rock side here. So we will tank this very comfortably. And let's see, the opponent's got a zoom reel in the back. So we're going to go for a dig here. The opponent should be throwing their charge move straight away if they want to get rid of us. But we are still going to be able to make it to another dig. We throw here and the opponent actually over farms there. We go for the dig. We get them very low. We're just going to force the opponent to throw their energy, but it's too late for the opponent as we can tank an ice beam very comfortably on our Togetic. Certainly tank a play rough from this range. The opponent going to fire off their charge move anyways, and it is just a play rough. Doesn't do much damage. We can very easily steel wing farm them down, so the opponent just concedes the match there. So GG's to the opponent there. Into the next game, we see Azumarill in the lead once again. So once again, just going to stay in this matchup, tank the first charge move, whatever they throw, and then go for a Dazzling Gleam. Now, this opponent's going to throw straight away as they go for an Ice Beam. It is super effective, but Togetic has some decent bulk there. We're now going to go for that Dazzling Gleam, and once again, if they let this go through, they will be in Poison Jab, fall down range, but they actually shield. But then they come in with their Lucario, so I'm just going to go for a close combat, throwing just before they make it to a potential Shadow Ball or something else. We one-shot Lucario there and the opponent's going to come in with their S Cavalier. We're still able to make it to another close combat up against the S Cav and we grab the final shield from the opponent. 
Now, I'm going to wait out the switch lock here, come back in with my Togetic. Actually, no, I actually come in with my Gabite here. I'm going to no shield because I feel like my lose condition is if they bait with an Acid Spray, but they go for the draw run. That does a lot of damage. We're going to go for a Flamethrower here. I was waiting by one turn just to make sure they don't make the catch. Flamethrower takes out the Escavalier, and now we need to make it to back-to-back -back charge moves, but even then, I don't think that's going to be quite enough damage to take out this Azumarill, but let's see. We go for the first Aerial Ace. Aerial Ace coming through. Aerial Ace does an okay amount of damage there. There, but the steel wings are starting to add up. We go for aerial ace number two. This should put them easily into the red health range. Now, can we get the mud shot farm down from this range before they get to back to back ice beams? The answer is yes, we're able to do so, and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to the opponent there. Into the next game, we have a massive core breaker for the entire team. Honestly, don't have a clue what to do here. I'm going to stay in initially. At least our Steel Wings are neutral, but I'm just going to have to take this move since Togetic is the bulkiest Pokemon on this team. We're now going to swap into Como O, but behind on energy, especially running Poison Jab as the fast move. This is still a very bad matchup, but I do just barely make it to a close combat, which is good for us. But unfortunately, they've taken out nearly two of my Pokemon. We have a shield advantage, but they're instantly going to gain that back with their loading Science Dash as we come in with a Gabite, which is going to take double super effective damage from these Ice Punches. So we shield the first one and we will overfarm just a little bit. Once again, waiting one turn before we throw the Dig, just to make sure the opponent doesn't make that catch. Dig takes out the Science Dash. They've got a Shadow Gramble in the back and we do just barely make it to another Dig here. And our only win condition really is if they've got a Flygon in the back, but unfortunately it is a Zoom Reel. We're not going to be able to win this game, so we just concede the match there. But GG's to that opponent. Internet's going to see Dedene in the lead, so not great for us. I've got two Pokemon in the back that, whilst they are Dragon types, they resist the fast move damage and can deal super effective damage with either Poison Jabs or Mud Shot. So the opponent's going to grab my shield, but they come in with Lucario and they throw a Power Up Punch straight away. So I can very easily no shield this. And as well, I haven't debuffed my defense yet. So that's amazing because I will get two back to back close combats. First one grabs the shield, second one might grab the second shield, in all honesty. And it does grab both shields from the opponent. They get the counter to farm down but that's okay now i'm gonna wait out my switch clock here come in with my togetic and i am possibly gonna no shield the first move here as you know i'm going to shield the first move as the opponent goes for a power punch i'm gonna try and go for the dazzling gleam here no unfortunately not gonna get there in time so i go for the aerial ace aerial ace doesn't quite ko and now they make it to another charge move i think this is enough for a shadow ball but it's just the power up punch so either i didn't count right or they just didn't have enough energy there now the opponent comes in with their zoom reel this should be game over unfortunately for me but we're gonna go for a dig dig does some decent damage there and the opponent isn't going to throw straight away so i make it to a second dig and the longer they over farm the worse this gets for them as this opponent is getting very low in their health range now so we can let this move go through of course ice beam does take us out but Togetic is a lot bulkier than the opponent is probably expecting. So we do live the Ice Beam and they are in perfect farm down range for me to come out with a Dazzling Gleam loaded to throw into Dedene coming back in. And this will be enough damage to take out Dedene and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to the opponent there. Into the next game, we see Togetic into a Slurpuff. So this is a positive matchup for us. We are going to see the opponent staying in, at least initially. I'm not going to fire off a Charge Boost straight away. I'm going to wait for them to throw. And if the opponent goes for a Flamethrower, then they're probably running Energy Ball as the secondary Charge Move. We're going to go for an Aerial Ace here, but the opponent makes a nice catch onto their Azumarill. Honestly, doesn't really matter that much, as now I'm going to swap into my Combo O, and no shields have been used yet, so I don't mind shielding in this matchup, and I will be able to maintain alignment very easily. They go for a play rough there, so probably not running Ice Beam, which is really good for me because now I can over farm in this matchup. We go for the close combat and we grab a shield. We can go for a second close combat from this range. It won't quite take them out, but it puts them into Poison Jab farm down range and they come in with a Galarian Weezing. So this unfortunately isn't too good. They should be able to no shield whatever I throw here, but we go for the close combat and the opponent uses their shield anyways. Not really sure why, but I am perfectly fine with that. And now we can come in with our Gabite. Typically, they're going to run Sludge and Overheat. And if they are, then we completely wall the Charge Boost. Sorry, no shield. The opponent goes for an Overheat. And we're now going to swap. We are able to catch the Charge Move onto my Togetic. And it ends up being the Energy Ball as well. So the opponent didn't see the swap or didn't react in time. There's no point throwing a Charge Move here. I've already got a move loaded on my Gabite. So what I'm going to do is let them take me out. We can get the Mud Shot Farm down. And the opponent recognizing there's nothing they can do. So they just just concede the match there. 
So GG's to the opponent there. Into the next game, we see a Berserker in the lead. Now, honestly, I could have probably stayed in initially because they're typically going to go for a close combat or a Trailblaze, which would be resisted. And even if they were running Foul Play, that's also resisted by the Togetic. So could have maybe farmed up a bit of energy there, but it doesn't really matter. The opponent's going to swap into their Flygon, go for the full farm down, but that energy isn't going to go anywhere as we come in with our Togetic. And once again, we can just let all these charge moves go through. As they go for a Scorching Sands, really does not do much damage at all. They will make it to another charge but that's fine with us we can just no shield once again and the opponent's gonna go for a dragon claw this time around don't even make it to a second scorching sands but that's fine and the opponent's probably gonna come back in no actually they come in with empoleon this is not ideal for me whatsoever. We're going to go for a Dazzling Gleam. It's not going to do too much damage, but it does get them very close to the half health range. I'm going to shield this up, and I sh hopefully I can just mud shot farm them down. Before they make it to the next charge, move. it will be very close, but unfortunately, it's not quite going to happen. So I have to go for a dig here. Grab the final shield, sorry, the first shield from the opponent, and I'm going to shield this up as well. I don't think the Berserker has an awful lot of energy either, so hopefully we can outpace them to the back-to-back -back charge moves. But I think they are just there now. So we go for the dig. Dig coming through. Grabs the final shield. But we end up losing CMP up against the Berserker. So unfortunately, Trailblaze takes us out. And now with the boosted attack, they should be able to take me out with another, another charge move. I need to make it to the Dazzling Clean, but I'm not able to get there in time. Trailblaze does take out the Togedic. And unfortunately, we do lose that game. So GG's do that opponent there. Into the next game, we see Empoleon in the lead this time around. We're going to save swap into our Como O. And the opponent hard counters us and then they just concede the match there and I was really confused as to what happened there. I'm not sure if they just like know me and realize they were hard countering me and thought, you know what, let's just give him the win. But I am so confused, but I'll take it for sure. So GG's to that opponent there. Into the next battle, we see Azumarill in the lead. So gonna go for an Aerial Ace here and the opponent lets that go through. So I actually played this slightly different to how I normally play it because normally I go for the Dazzling Gleam. But here we're now gonna swap into our combo O and typically with Azu in the lead, our energy is gonna be very valuable in the back. So the opponents typically stay in as long as they can with their Azumarill, which isn't that ideal for them because they are taking obviously super effective damage from the poison jabs. We go for a close combat, wasn't 100% sure if a Dragon Claw would KO from that range. Now it would KO, but we got the Final shield from the opponents. I'm actually going to shield my combo O here. Still got quite a lot of health, and the opponent swaps into Slurpuff. So, actually, not that positive matchup for me, but it doesn't matter. We can go for a close combat, putting them into the yo. Uh into the low yellow health range. We swap into our Gabai and the opponent makes a huge mistake going for a flamethrower. Not sure what they're thinking there, but we can just let the next move go through as well. I didn't want to throw it. I wanted to come in with my Togetic and get the full farm down as we should be able to take this game fairly easily now. We're going to come in with the Togetic, get the farm down and the opponent is going to come in with their Flygon. We can go for a Dazzling Gleam and this is easily going to one shot the Flygon from full health. And I'm able to Steel Wing, farm down the Azu and take that game. So GG's to the opponent there. Into the next game, we see Escavalier in the lead. So this isn't that bad of a matchup. Typically, they're going to be running Acid Spray and like Drill Run, but they're actually running Aerial Ace here. So this is going to be a little bit worse for us. Not that much worse, to be honest, because Acid Spray obviously over time would add up. But we go for an Aerial Ace of our own, grabbing a shield. And now I'm going to let this move go through and then probably swap out of this matchup here. I'm gonna swap into my Gabite this time, just because obviously there is no fast move pressure from the poison jabs on my combo O whatsoever. So we are going to shield up the area. They come in with a Flygon. So I'm gonna go for the dig just before they make it to the Dragon Claw. Hopefully grab a shield and we do grab that shield. And at this point, I'm pretty happy to let the Gabite go down. We've baited out the Flygon, which means Togetic can come in, completely wall the energy and very easily get rid of the Flygon, especially since they have no shields remaining. I didn't want to throw straight away just because I realized it would be a CMP tie. So I'm going to let that move go through. I'm going to overpump just slightly now and then go for a Dazzling Gleam. Dazzling Gleam, as we've already seen easily enough to take out the Flygon. And let's see what they've got in the back. They come in with Dragalgy and uh, unfortunately, this is not ideal for me since they are going to be resisting the Poison Jab damage. I resist the Aquatel, so I let it go through, but that might be a huge mistake because now, unfortunately, I'm actually not going to be able to make it to a second Dragon Claw before they get the Dragon Tail farm down. And yeah, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to Steel Wing farm them down either. So I just let the Togetic go down to the Aquatel. And unfortunately, we do lose that game. But GG's to that opponent there. Into the next game, we see Klefki in the lead. So very spicy pick from the opponent. They are running Astonish, which did get a boost this or a buff this season. 
they could be running flash cannon so i will respect the damage and the opponent is going to go for that flash cannon straight away probably would have taken us out and then unfortunately we simultaneously swap but also they end up getting this swap one turn before i do so which that's not ideal and they are running play rough as well so they just fully one shot my combo oh, not ideal for me but we're going to come back in with the togetic i don't think airy lace would be enough to put them into steel wing farm down range so i go for an undercharge on the dazzling gleam i get the farm down and let's see what the opponent wants to do the opponent's going to come in with their clef key so i'm just going to go straight for a dazzling gleam here this is going to be resisted damage i do believe but it still does huge damage and we get the steel wing farm down and the opponent's got galarian rapidash in the back so i'm going to swap here trying to catch a body slam not able to do so i have to just let this move go through and the opponent is going to go for a high horsepower and the opponent makes a huge mistake throwing their energy here. They should have committed to a full farm down. But now we can just very easily steel wing farm them all the way down. They've still got two shields remaining. But they can't do anything with them as I'm able to get the fast wave farm down and take that game. But GG's to that opponent there. Into the next game, we see Azumarill in the lead. So the opponent's going to say swap into Registeel. Fine with me. We're going to come in with our Gabite. Go for a dig straight away, throwing just before they make it to the Focus Fast. And dig is going to go unshielded. It does some decent damage there, unfortunately. Doesn't quite put them into much of farm down range. So I will have to throw another charge move to get rid of the Registeel. So I'm going to over farm here, throwing nearly at the CMP tire once again. Dig takes out the Registeel. But unfortunately, we're so low that we're not quite going to make it to another dig which is not ideal. The opponent comes back in with their Azumarill and they're going to swap into their Galarian Stunfist. So I'm going to swap. I'm able to catch a resisted Rockside, but unfortunately, this is a really uncomfortable matchup as I have to go for close combats to do any meaningful damage. My poison jabs are triple resisted. So over time, it's just not going to add up whatsoever. And the opponent baits me with a Rockside and now we're going to go for a close combat here. Close combat should be grabbing a shield from the opponent. We should probably be baiting in this matchup, but... I'm not, re I'm not really a big fan of baiting, but the opponent is clearly a huge fan of baiting there. And then they make a really nice play, banking all of the energy, swapping back into Azumarill. We've got no shields remaining, so unfortunately, there's nothing we can do there, so we just concede the match. But really well played by the opponent there. Into next battle, we see Galarian Weezing in the lead. So this is a pretty decent matchup for us. I can let the first move go through as they go for a sludge. Obviously, it is super effective, but it's not a very good move, so it doesn't do too much damage there. We're going to go for an Aerial Ace. The opponent no shields that, and then we swap into our Gabite to catch the next charge move, as it will be a resisted sludge. And now the opponent comes in with their Azumarill. So this is fine with me. We're going to go for a dig here, and if the opponent once again wants to over farm, I will make it to another dig, and I will be able to put them into farm down range with my combo o with those poison jabs so really good for me the opponent is going to over farm we get them incredibly low i think opponents just get very greedy with their azu they go for an ice beam of course they will make it to another charge move but that's fine with me i can safely shield this up and combo o's energy is usually very good up against the meta so let's see what the opponent wants to do they are going to come in with their own galarian stunfisk so once again galarian stunfisk a little bit tricky to play out here but we're going to go for a close combat I think that was a CMP tie with the potential Earthquake. Actually, no, it wasn't quite, but the opponent's going to throw the energy now as they go for the Earthquake here. So we are now going to over farm once again. I should be able to outpace them. But they throw here. This should just be a rock side. It is the rock side from the opponent. They swap back into their wheezing. I have to swap out since I was debuffed in my defense. But that's a brilliant play by the opponent because now all they have to do is farm to the back to back rock sides. They can very easily take these moves on their Kalarin Stunfisk. Just save a shield for the Stunfisk. And they should be able to take this game very easily. We've got back to back close combats, but there's nothing we can do here. Get to fire off the first rock side. It will be enough to take out the Togetic. But the opponent makes a huge mistake. They don't throw their charge move for whatever reason. Close combat number one grabs the shield. And close combat number two will easily be enough to take out the Stunfisk. And I'm able to take that game. So opponent made a brilliant play there and then just threw it all away. I think maybe just underestim underestimating the energy on my combo. O, but I'll certainly take advantage of that. And now into the next game, we see a Shadow Dragonair, which I believe is the first one I've seen in this cup. Very good in the Open Great League this season, but not that amazing in the fancy cup just because obviously dragon breath is going to be resisted by the majority of the pokemon in this meta but yeah, because they threw on alignment with their first charge we actually make it to the back-to-back -back aerial aces before they make it to the second body sound and at this point we've got both shields i'm fine with that we're gonna let the togetic go down come in with my combo o since poison jabs do a little bit more damage than the mud shots and we should be able to shield once fully farm them down and let's see what the opponent wants to do 
they're going to come in with the Azumarill, which isn't ideal since we are already very low, but I can make it to the back-to-back -back close combats very comfortably. The first one gets them nearly into the yellow health. The second one will get them very close to the red health already. Actually, it does get them into the red health. They're going to go for the bubble farm down. They're not quite able to do it, but they swap into Empoleon, and this is fine with me. I will be able to outpace the Empoleon to back-to-back -back charge moves, so all I've got to do here, shield up the Hydro Cannon, farm to 100 energy, and I can fire off back-to-back -back digs here. One against the Empoleon, and the second dig will be enough damage to very easily take out the Azumarill in the back. They might have 100 energy, but it does not matter, as a dig takes out the Azu, and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to the opponent there. Into the next game, we see a Flygon in the lead. So amazing lead for us. The opponent's going to swap into their Azumarill once again. And we are just going to stay in. Once again, I can just tank this Ice Beam fairly comfortably. And I don't really need much health to beat the Flygon in the back either. So I'm not that worried either. We're going to go for a Dazzling Gleam. Dazzling Gleam does go unshielded. And now we can just come in with the Combo O. I can safely shield once, fully farm them down. And as well, if they want to come back in with the Flygon, they will be hit by multiple Dragon Claws. So this is a great situation to be and of course we are down a shield but it does not matter let's see what the opponent wants to do they are going to come in with their fly gone so we're going to fire off the dragon claw straight away dragon claw will be grabbing the shield from the opponent we can make it to another dragon claw here and if the opponent doesn't throw straight away i will make it to a third dragon claw before they fire off and yes okay they throw on the cmp tie very good timing by the opponent but dragon claw doesn't quite take us out there so i go for the next dragon claw and dragon claw will be taking out the fly gone from this range they've got a register in the back but once again Gabite doesn't care as we can go for a dig dig isn't going to be enough damage to take out the registeel from this range but it doesn't matter I'm going to shield up the first charge move as they go for a focus blast honestly not really in risk of them going for a bait with the zap cannon because I can live a focus blast anyways and I will be able to make it to two more digs even if somehow they did get the debuff there and live it very comfortably. But here, we're going to let the Focus Blast go through. I'm just going to go for the full mud shot farm down, take out the Reggie Steel, and I'm able to take that game. So GG's to that opponent there. Into the next game, we see Azumarill in the lead this time around. So once again, just going to play out this lead matchup initially, tank the first charge move, go for a Dazzling Gleam, but actually the opponent does hold onto their energy. So we go for the Dazzling Gleam first. The opponent lets that go through. Now they're going to throw their charge move. We can just let this move go through as the opponent is going to go for a play rough. So probably running Hydro Pump as the other charge move. That's fine with me. They're now going to swap into their S Cavalier. We're going to farm up here, go for a close combat just before they make it to the charge move. Close combat grabs a shield from the opponent. And if they go for a full farm down, we will make it to a second close combat here. So going to grab both shields from the opponent to shield advantage. We can come back in with our Tick, and we should be able to live an acid spray as well so i'm going to force the opponent basically just to throw all of their energy straight away but i believe it's going to be lucario in the back so i've got to be a little bit careful here and actually i make a bit of a mistake obviously i throw on cmp I'm going to shield this up. Obviously, Acid Spray going to take us out there. I thought Aerial Ace would do quite a lot of damage here, but it doesn't do much damage, and it doesn't really put them into farm down range either. They make it to another charge move, so at this point, I think it's game over. But the opponent, for whatever reason, goes for an Acid Spray, and not only that, they then swap into Ferrothorn, and I don't think they know about Flamethrower because Flamethrower is going to one-shot the Ferrothorn, and now they come back in with the S Cavalier. We get the full much shot farm down, and I will be able to go for back-to-back -back digs, and honestly, the first dig should be enough damage anyways to take out the zoom reel and i'm able to take that game so ggs to the opponent there into the next game we see togetic into reggie still so obviously not a very good lead gonna say swap into my combo o immediately and the opponent swaps into a water gun kingdra this is quite cool because it is also a legacy fast move but i don't know what they are thinking here coming in with their kingdra up against my combo o now this isn't quite enough energy for the outrage but i play it safe anyways they do get the debuff which is a bit annoying but it doesn't really make a difference here as a close combat wouldn't quite take out the registeel anyway so we are going to farm to the back-to-back -back close combats we should actually be able to over farm just a little bit more than this so we go for the first one that does about I don't know, 49% of their health there we can go for the next close combat grabbing a shield from the opponent 
actually a lot less than 49, maybe 40% of their health, but it doesn't matter. Focus Blast will be taking us out. We come in with our Gabite, and the opponent's got Clefable in the back, so I'm going to go for a dig straight away. If they let this go through, I can just swap into my Togetic immediately, and I will be swapping here. Doesn't matter if they throw a Meteor Mash. We can live one. They will have to throw a second Meteor Mash to get rid of my Togetic, and that's fine with me. They are going to fire off pretty much straight away. Unfortunately, they do make it to the next charge we pretty quickly, but I will be able to get to a dig on the CMP tie. Honestly, shouldn't have thrown here. Should have just gone for the extra mud shot because now their switch lock is probably coming up here. So actually, they were going to be able to swap straight away back into their Registeel. They might be able to outpace me, but no, they are not quite able to do so. Dig will be enough damage to very easily take out the Registeel. And the opponent is able to, well, get farmed down by the mud shots, and I'm able to take that game. I wish you could 5-0 in that final set. So that's going to be it for today's video. If you did enjoy it, please make sure you leave a like, leave a comment letting me know. And as well, don't forget to respond to the question of the day if you haven't done so already. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications. That way you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. But with that being said, thank you all so much for watching today's video, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.